Well, hello everyone, this is Katherine Toon, and today I have some really uplifting, encouraging stuff, uh, and I have good reason to be that. I spent the morning with Jesus, and then I went out and had uh, breakfast with my daughter, my eldest daughter, Veronica, who is an incredible optimist. She is uh, someone who always is uplifting and really amazing and beautiful. So kudos to you, Veronica. And you know, it was really interesting as I was kind of meditating on kind of what the Lord wanted as a message. He was really uh, bringing to light this whole sense of kind of his keeping power. But you know, God is love. And so in this keeping power, you know, there are some real keys to that. How do you uh, keep on keeping on when maybe the right stuff isn't happening to you, <laughs> whether you're running into stuff, where you're running into, um, you know, whatever it is, stuff happens, resistance happens, right? How do you keep yourself in the place of love? You know, how does that happen? And you know, one of the, one of the ways uh, that the Lord is really highlighting uh, to me through my daughter is this power of believing the best. You know, and, and a lot of people would call that being naive, um, but the truth is you have a choice. Like, you know, things can go both ways. It can go really crappy, <laughs> and people can live down uh, from who they are, or they can live up to who they are. And so in the place where, where you don't know where things are going to land or where the situation is going to land, this ability to always believe the best, not that you're saying, you know what, we're just ignoring uh, the realities of a fallen world, but you know what, even in the fallen world, there's beauty, there's nobility, there's bravery, there's uh, being a champion, uh, there's sacrifice and giving, uh, and there is love, there's beauty and abundance. And so uh, what's going to keep us uh, in the place where we're, um, we're sustained and we're looking forward? And a lot of that depends on what we're looking at, Okay, so Jesus said, look unto me, the author and finisher of your faith, right? Um, but also where we're looking in the world, right? Because, you know, we can choose and, and then what filter we filter things through, right? And, you know, it's interesting when you operate from that position of love, it is a place of safekeeping. So while maybe um, the cynical and the... Um, the uh, people that are, are, are like uh, hardened, right? And are seeing everything from that perspective, they start to diminish. Okay, that is not a something you can build on. Okay, um, you start to diminish. And so let's talk about this. And this is countercultural. Why? Why? Because, you know, the culture is like we're trying to look cool. We're trying to, you know, uh, not be sentimental. We're trying to, you know, uh, act like we don't care and all this silly stuff that's really not who we are, but are really self protective mechanisms. And you know what? When you are operating in the place of self-protection, you live a closed life. And a closed life is a diminished life. You diminish in who you are. You diminish in your potential of what you're going to manifest. You, you, you diminish in your potential of what you're going to accomplish, right? So living an open life, that does set you up for some hits, but you are actually, oh my goodness, living. What a concept. And Jesus came that we might have life more abundant to the full till it overflows. When he was on the earth, he lived an open life. God uh, is open open to you. God is open to you in a way so that if you choose to reject him, wow, it probably doesn't feel good, right? But he's open. He lives his heart open. So let's talk about this keeping power of love, this keeping power of believing the best. It is a secret weapon. Oh my goodness. The people that are going to last and are going to be in their old age and still excited about life, still excited about the contribution that they can make, still open and 
interested in learning are the people that will be looking at the glass half half uh, full, right? Okay, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. What a concept. We're talking about love. We're talking about the person of love. And I'm reading this from a translation you may not have read this in before, but this is so good. You're going to enjoy this. This is from the Passion Translation. And it's starting in verse 4. It says, love is large and incredibly patient. Okay, that's your God, by the way. He is large for you and he's incredibly patient, right? Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It's a consistency, it's a default, right? So that when maybe you act like a nasty burger, well, you know what? That is, you're acting out of character and that's an exception, but consistently kind and gentle. It refuses to be jealous. You know, uh, there are times every now and then I'll have a little jealous thing going on, like it'll rise up and I'm like, oh no, mm -mm, not gonna go there, right? Um, and it's like, I refuse, cause that's gross. Where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work, right? Um, it refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else, right? Love does not brag about one's own achievements nor inflate its own importance. And let me say this, you are so important, there's nothing you need to inflate. You are so significant, there is nothing you need to be artificially inflate. You be you, you have love show you who you are, and wow, that is amazing. And it doesn't need to bolster itself up with anything. You don't, you don't need to prove nothing to nobody, I'm just saying. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, right? It always, it's honorable. Love is honorable, right? Nor selfishly seek its own honor. I guess that was the next verse. Yeah, probably good. We're tracking. Uh, love is not easily irritated, right? Wow, that's a good one, right? It's not touchy or quick to take offense, right? Love joyfully celebrates honesty, right? Because there's so many things that are honestly beautiful, honestly powerful, honestly amazing, right? Honestly authentic, even in its brokenness. You know, some people when they're like, man, I'm just so jacked up. Well, yeah, but you're awesome. And thank you for being so amazingly authentic about it. And you're just on your way, right? Uh, love is not irrit uh, 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 love finds no delight in what is wrong, right? It's not critical spirit, right? You can't build on criticism. It's hard to construct on criticism. Now, helpful feedback that's based in love, you can construct on that. But criticism where it's looking for, oh, well, you quoted this wrong or you did this wrong, or just like, oh, gee whiz, right? Because you can just as well said, well, you did this right, you did this right, you did this right, right? Um, Love is a safe place of shelter. That is a place of retreat. You know, a lot of times when people are really having a hard, crappy time and they're really kind of under it and life is sucking right now, all that kind of thing. And, and, and I, you know, I, I counsel a lot of people and a lot of times I'll just say, you know, you just need to retreat to love. You need to retreat to love. So in the place where maybe you just really blew it and there's a lot of nasty consequences and it's hard to clean it up and it's just hard well you need to retreat to love and in the place where someone maybe really blew it for you right or life it just is sucking right now, you need to retreat to love what does that mean people ask me what does that mean well yeah what does that mean what well, where is your resting place where is your place of strength where are you rooted and grounded where can you go for a place of retreat respite recovery you know love always have some has something good to say about you even when you really blow it right love always has strength to lend love always is patient and is kind and is not irritated and if you blew it for the 12th time in the same area is not there to beat you up is there to pick you up and help you up he's the lifter of your head right um and so you do that in a place, I, whatever that is for you. So if that's in prayer, if that's taking a walk, uh, if that's taking a hot 
bath, if that's retreating to your to your bedroom to rest, if that is working out. I don't know what that is for you. If that's journaling, journaling is a really great way to do that. Um, but you retreat back to that connection with the person of love to get restored. And to even in the place where maybe you blew it, you need some, so you need some creative ways to solve the problem and clean up the mess. You need to understand how to help the ones maybe that you've hurt. Okay. Love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others and about others. You know, even when people are really living down to a false low self, in the place of that, okay, you can see people, it's like, wait a second, that's not you. No, you're not drugging, abusing, stealing my money. Okay, that's not who you are. Let me call you up to who you are. And it's amazing when you start to believe in people, people can start to believe in themselves. It's amazing. Uh, love never takes failure as defeat. Wow, that'll preach right there. See how you handle yourself when you fail or when someone else fails, okay, says a lot about what the future is going to hold for you because it's not so much what happens, you've heard this, but what you make it mean. And when you say, when, when, when you make failure mean, I'm a failure, well, you can't build on I'm a failure. No, you make failure mean is like, well, this is one way it didn't work. Wow, I can learn from that. Let's learn from that because I'm a champion and I'm an overcomer. So I'm going to fail my way to success. Right? Love never takes failure as defeat for, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. So, you know, even in the place where people become unlovable, where they hate you, well, you have a choice, you know, Am I going to stop loving? You know, recently I shared, um, I had someone call me. I was kind of, de uh, not debating with them, but ha discussing stuff with them and uh, on a YouTube video that I did. And they were, you know, very critical and all that kind of thing. And they literally, they called me. They ended up, it was started sort of dwindling down. Hi, Holly. Started dwindling down. And they eventually called me a, what did they call me? I have to, I have to even remember, a, a, a child of Satan. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like, wow, <laughs> that's taking it to a whole nother level. You know, my theology may be in the toilet. I'm, I'm okay with that, but um, be, just be careful here. Anyway, and so, but you know what? I just felt so badly for the guy because, you know, you don't say that because, number one, you're seeing rightly. You don't say that because you're operating from love and calling up people to their highest, right? Even if I was serving the devil, you can see me for who I truly am and call me up to the highest. But let's be really clear, I want nothing to do with a dude, right? So, uh, you know, you know, I, anyway. So, but how do you handle yourself? Love never stops loving. See, that's your safety. That's your protection, right? Because I'm not looking at the dude and, and honestly, the nastiness of that, um, although I felt the impact, but I'm looking, it's like, wow, that is a son who just doesn't know who they are, who's hurting, who's really hurting. You don't say that because you feel good, right? And so, or, or because you are not under some sort of uh, condemning spirit. And so how is that a protection for you when it always believes the best? Wow, there's always something better. You can build on the potential of something better. So wherever you are, if you are flat on your back, well, you know what? You can always look up. You can always look up. There's a sky out there that's got stars, that's got clouds, that's got blue, that's even got rain that's that's feeding the earth, that's got whatever. You can always look up. There's always an up. There's always the one who lifts us up. There's always the one you can retreat to who knows who you really are and whose job as love is to call you up in conformity with who he made you to be, which is breathtaking, which is beautiful, which is one of a kind, which is distinctly you, you and him, in him and your flavor, right? And that's the one that you can look to because you are, as my book says, marked by love. 
That is your primary identity. You're being conformed into the image of love, who is patient, who is, what does it say? Endlessly patient, I like the way it worded this in the Passion Translation. Large and incredibly patient, gentle, consistently kind, right? Right? Refusing to be jealous when someone else gets a blessing, not bragging, not trafficking in shame or disrespect, right? Not selfishly seeking its own honor, not easily irritated or quick to take offense, but joyfully celebrating honesty. There's some honest, beautiful things in your life right where you are. Right where you are. And you can focus on all the crap or you can focus on the beautiful things and build on that. You know, if, if I, I, I've been I'm ministering to someone who has been... Um, in a really, really down time for actually years. And he was just getting really negative. And I love him so much. He's such a gorgeous brother. Love him to pieces. He's an amazing human being. And hi, Janie. So good to see you. Um, and uh, he was so down and he was being so negative. And I finally just called him out. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. I am not going to sit there and and you know uh, uh, help you in your negativity, in your insistence to look at everything in your life through this lens of I'm screwed and God doesn't love me, you know I'm a failure. I'm like I refuse. I'm just not gonna partner with that. As a matter of fact, we're gonna get some Holy Ghost butt kicking going on. <laughs> Because sometimes, and loving someone, you don't say, wait a second, this is, you call them out on their stuff. You call them out because they're not acting in line with who they are, and it's not even really honest. And so fighting for the right to be negative, oh my goodness, you can always reframe. You can always, because even if it's just a small thing, and, you know, and in all honesty and fairness, I mean, he really got a short end of the stick. I mean, really, that sucks. But I'm saying even the place of short end of the stick, really, there's something to build on it. If you can pull out that thing, you can build on the small thing today that does not look lovely. And you can build on that. You see, that is believing the best. That is, wow, okay, they're coming to take my house. I'm going to have to sell my kids into slavery. What do I have? Well, I've got some pots. <laughs> Let me believe God to fill some oil and get some more pots, right? There's always something you have. You know, want to know why? Because love, God, is faithful and he's lovely. And you grab a hold. Oh man, there's a time to be stubborn. There is a time to be out and out rebellious against the darkness that wants to define your life in negative gray terms, in limiting terms, in ugly terms, okay? Uh, no, you get rebellious about it. That is a time to take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ because what is Christ saying? Christ is saying, wow, there's always a place to go. There's always a way of escape. There's always something I have for you. Even in the darkness, there is gold. So you dig out your gold, you build on that, and it's amazing how your life starts to open up. That is the keeping power of believing the best. Anyway, I hope this is helpful for you today. I love you guys. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the honor of watching. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, flash my book here. Okay, for those of you who haven't read it, this is called Marked by Love. Um, this is really good. And I can say that in humility because God wrote so much. I mean, it's not like, obviously, it's God in my flavor, okay? Um, but I'm saying he had, he had so many nuggets. This is like 20 years of me digging out of pits, of me digging out of attacks and negative things and just stuff, a lot of stuff that wasn't my own fault, and then some stuff that was. <laughs> How many of you have done something stupid before? Okay, I share that, by the way. <laughs> so, because honesty is also beautiful, right? Honesty, right? Joyfully celebrates honesty. Love does that. Why? You can afford to be honest. Why? Because you're totally significant, accepted, holy, undefiled, beautiful, powerful, even in the midst of mistakes. The, the, uh, a lot of my testimony is in chapter, chapter uh, 10. So anyway, so there it is, marked by love, unveiling the substance of your true identity. So who is the true you? How does that get uh, unveiled, okay? 
um, that gets unveiled as, as you seek the Lord and realize that, wow, he is the one to unveil you to you. He is the one to unveil who he is, right? Unveil who you are and then unveil what he has for you. And in that, in the vision, there is provision. You start right where you're at with what you got and God will help you get there from here as you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, as you look unto love, the one that always believes the best, the one that never fails. I'm telling you, people need this message and we need it preached to ourselves. We need to preach the gospel every single day, right? So anyway, this is available, Marked by Love, Unveiling the Substance of Your True Identity is available on Amazon uh, in softcover and Kindle. And I just recorded it and it should be coming out this month in audio for those of you who are audio people. I'm also working with someone uh, to get it translated into Spanish. The Lord told me that we just need to get the message out. And you can help me in that if you share this video, get the book uh, or buy it for someone. I think I just it's a, it'll be a huge blessing for you to encounter God in these powerful, life-sustaining ways and encounter yourself in these powerful, life-sustaining ways. There's an anointing on the book for that. So I can, with a pure heart, and promote it. Um, so, and if you have read it, would you write uh, a, a, an honest, um, an honest uh, review on Amazon that will just really help to also get the message out, right? I'm self-published, so I don't have tons of resources. Anyway, so enough about that. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for the honor of watching. Um, give me your feedback about how, you know, love is working for you, how love is helping you believe the best in your circumstance. Let's, let's engage here. Share this video because I think it'll be a blessing for other people. And as always, I love you. You have an amazing day. Bye-bye.